Our lot thought that would mean it was going to be easy, so we did have a proper print for the rest of the block. Um, but it was very popular because we did that exams, we could just work. Um, once they realized they had some control and it wasn't a scary control, um, that's all very powerful stuff. And in my mind, more important than the school structures. It's probably why I'm not doing so. Right, I think it's time to show you some stuff. But I got a bunch of things. We actually use this live in action. <coughs> this is how we make our proposals. I'm going to show you the proposal. Um, unfortunately, I can't give it to you because it's a commercial proposal structure. There's some stuff in it, which I'm sure is sensitive. Mobile prototype. This was um, one of my colleagues, Andy. He's actually an ex student of mine, which is kind of cool. I didn't actually teach him very much. He's um, working with me on how to prototype mobile technology really fast so we can show our customer in four or five hours what they're thinking, uh, just using jQuery in it. Rapid prototyping, I don't have any examples of that, but I can talk about it. And some infographics, which I did in varying degrees of constraint, which we call it. So, HTML5 to PDF using prop. This is a technique for desktop publishing. I kid you not. Uh, FOP stands for Formatting Objects Processing. What it does is it determines the open source to that, which is fairly standard markup. In fact, it is HTML5 markup. So it's got our references and hosting details and all sorts of bits, which you can read out the trees, costumes. Five stages, hours on the side, that kind of thing, uh, which is probably of interest in this. So it turns that HTML5 to an automated process into this document. It automatically generates the table of contents, it applies page templates. Sets up the costing. Now, in the HTML5 version, what you see are hours. In this one, what you see are prices. So, we don't show our customers hours. Um, they can figure it out if they really feel the need, if they don't charge our app. Um, but what we do is we show them what we're going to do on each of the stages. One, five stages. I've had some times on that. It's, a, it's nothing but like a teacher coming into your uh, industry and getting the teacher voicing. Saying no, we must do it this way. Um, but basically, their prices works out GST, adds it all together, does totals, that kind of thing. Puts in optionals. Now, this, <coughs> I mean, this is a big version. <coughs> Lays out a sign off sheet. So this is a very large version of an uh, example of XHTML. So, yeah, but basically, what it does is it takes that file. Passes it through that file, which I will show you because it's really scary. If you ignore some of the it's got things like page masters, um, which is the, the language under the hood of things like InDesign and Scribes. If you actually dig particularly deep, you'll find them talking about page masters. And I'm, the kind of templates would be there. Um, Scribus talks about master pages. <coughs> and Scribus is actually using very, very similar technology for this to do its PDF generating um, out the end. So basically, you're setting up a bunch of templates which look awful, but effectively all they're doing is saying, 
the region before, the region after, the regions on the side and the middle region look like this, heading the margin into the background. Background hyphen image URL. Thank you for to email us all down the call sheet. This one's awful, it's got lots of pages and templates. Um, and table of contents and stuff. On my website, we have a much simpler version. Um, and we have separate styles, effectively style sheets for headings and costumes and things like that. <coughs> now, I had Year 11 doing all of this because it was more interesting for them. Once we played around with Scribus for a bit, um, and they've laid out the page and kind of done it really badly. You know, they've imported some word processing stuff and also their styles and formatting them. You to go through and read from styles and drive them nuts. And most of them have done a fairly average job. What we got them to do was I set up the basics of an HTML, XHTML transition file, and then they would, and gave them an exercise. And they would create a background image, a big background image, that would be the page background, if you like. And then they would process it, and we get that process running, because it's a wee bit terminal. I think that one Linux go run it through a command line. And they'd get that process running, so they'd say, I want this HTML, this XSL to turn into this. Once they got that running, we could see a PDF at the end, and it was an instant win for them. So I designed it so I wouldn't fail. Then they would style their headings. Then they would do things like page breaks or an H2 or something like that. So suddenly they're learning about page break before, page break after. It's a wonderful structure now. Then the people who went a little bit more interesting there, you introduce pagination. So page numbers, you know, all happened at the bottom. Uh, it's mostly automated, so it was an easy one again. Just constantly building them up. Um, the aim, and I never got this far, but I always regret it, is that level 3 students will be creating more proposals using this technology. So they're using a web technology to create a print technology, which is an easy win for the teacher for range of skills. When you first rendered your PDF and you found 72 dot per inch background, and it looks awful when you print it, you learn about resolution. A little bit bigger. And then once you've made that image really big, you accidentally put it into your HTML file and it renders on the screen. And that's you learn about resolution the other day. So it, this is probably a pretty serious um, This is a big one and it took me weeks to get right. One page template, simple HTML file. Use the word to introduce that technology. It's a basic graphic design. Hello? It's very Okay, right. Okay, thank you. Um, that one's not on hard drive. jQuery and HTML mobile prototype. And I'm pretty sure there's a whole um, standard dedicated towards prototyping as well. <coughs> Does anyone use jQuery? The JavaScript language? It is probably one of the best languages to get in young um, because it's basically a big honking library of JavaScript. So writing JavaScript straight out of the box is hard work. And most programmers, you know, developers aren't using it quite like that anymore. What jQuery does is creates a library of JavaScript things like show hide and um, accordion and things like that. A huge number of them. It's free to so download it. And then what you do is you write very simple little calls in your um, JavaScript, if you like. They call that big library. And they, the nice thing is they use the same sort of selectors as CSS. So you can say H2 or div dot something. And it'll select that element to work on. And 
And when I first played with that, a couple of years ago, um, with a little bit of help from some developers, we started to come up with an idea where I could build prototypes as part of the conceptual work for a customer and offer something. So I didn't need to get programmer involved because they're expensive and they take a long time and I'm going to do what you want. Whereas as a designer, I can create graphical stuff and now show them roughly what's going on. There's blue tag and cell tag, so it's not the final product, but it's a really quick way to get some functionality. So what we've done is, I'll put the little punk game guide, let's just see where we are. We can do little things like that. Cool. So I can <coughs> put that interface. We can do little pops, show lines. And what this means for a customer is that they can look at what we're doing and say, I don't like the font. I don't like the way this works. Oh, I really like that thing. Can we do more of that? What would happen if we had 50 on the screen? What would happen if we wanted to go out 20 years? And we can do nice things like switch it between different devices by changing the background image. And one of the wins for this at a secondary level is that it's very, very simple. The students don't need to know how the big JavaScript library works. They just start learning about the small calls um, that trigger these things. And that means that they can focus on the solution of the technology. And that's kind of neat. This is the jQuery. inside a slightly bigger function. So what it, it's basically a, a click function on the heading through. Which if you can see the markup you know, very little. But basically those main headings with the data in them. When you click it, it does all these things. And one of them is to toggle a class as a parent to say it's active. To say it's a class, that kind of thing. And when I was students, we start simple. I onto this pretty quickly and it feels like programming, which is nice. So they're starting to get that, that motion in way of doing it. Right, a couple of quickies, this is fun on infographics. That's uh, for a customer who's a bit weird. So it's all over the place. Basically, a network structure in a slightly funny way. It's a bit of an Android picture they have. Hosting infrastructure uh, proposals. So showing different ways of the hosting structure being set up. The building is not the same size as the server. This is where our work. Uh, the way our applications and websites work and ways we can integrate. We use a combination of Ruby and Drupal and Ruby on Rails. Um, and we were looking at ways to front end its website but full of data on the back end. Sharing so just a simple way to try and communicate that to uh, everyone in the team and to our customers. And that one was an example of a central system for our customer that they could access with mobile devices. So that's probably the kind of thing I'd be introducing to people too. It's just really you know, a little bit about vector illustration. They're probably not technical, but it shows some techniques that make those shiny. Um, beginning to explain the solutions. Uh, if you were matching up with the infrastructure, need, this is a really neat way to do it because uh, you can buy media and structure in a way that actually makes some sense. Um,
you guys up on your website anyway. Yeah. Okay. Basically, that's what the, um, everything that I showed you, except for the proposal. Yeah, I mean, not 
not unlimited, but yeah, it's more the students who uh, just more
that was we had to spend a Monday morning talking to our 16 year old boy because his father's been the shit out of him. And he was only home, you know, two days a week or something. That was sort of his final one. Like, oh, oh, oh. I'd have to go back to work now. And that's not, you know, that's not something a teacher should take on. So I always figured, um, one thing was grad school was sort of teach the kids who are in the class. They're valuable to have their year. It turns out, I mean, year, my, one of my year 12s, the second year, my year 12 class, I think they had 20 good kids to talk. And as a teacher, you spent quite a long time on course, outlining the thinking. And it took me a very long time to get to the point where I'll, these kids are just doing themselves a lot more time with the teacher. And they're going to learn something really interesting. And we'll take the piss out of all the students who don't turn up. I just said to change the role. I photocopied the role a couple of ways and wrote it for everyone. But took the maps, it was easier than actually doing the good school. One of the things that actually don't have to do with the art. Schools that always had like schools that are pretty fun. They had the computer room and what looked like a refurbished block. And it was all crammed and horrible and you couldn't work together. They were forced from the fingers. It's sort of unfair. Yeah. 
So if they want to do level three, they have to be reduced to stuff at level three, but they are in a level one class to get the basic basic. No, it would be quite cool to go to get it, but I mean,
IT guy who told him, it's in the screenshot, the image from Cambridge something like that. And uh, he said, oh, it's all right, you can only see Hegley. And you can't see the stuff. We went into the stuff folder and we might to delete your stuff. And then they jumped out into another school and went right down into a train of staff room folders, staff folders in another school. And uh, Telecom's response was to give these students a cease and desist letter. And then they fixed it, and then my students hacked them again. And they fixed it. There's your attitudes for you. I just had a hack after someone quit and I didn't see my shot. I just got out of it. There's a child in there. Uh, we asked them to experiment with them. I'm going to show them the experiment. I said, oh, right, this is pay right. Because most of the time, I'll show you the Every time we got security access, we pressed legal. We gave them pay right. And I found that he was hacking. He didn't want any pay right. So the presentation is it's pretty. Is it pretty? Is it pretty? Is it pretty? Is the presentation is using uh, it's just a really simple HTML and